That tradition began with the company's founder, André Citroën. In 1913, this Frenchman of Dutch Jewish extraction founded the Citroën Gear Company in Paris. The company made large gears with a unique chevron facing that allowed them to function smoothly and very quietly. The stylized form of the chevron design became the company's trademark and remains so to this day. With the outbreak of World War I, Reserve Captain André Citroën returned to military service. At the front, he found that France was suffering a dire shortage of artillery ammunition, a problem the 36-year-old industrialist immediately decided to solve. With government backing, Citroën bought land on the south bank of the River Seine, in the suburbs of Paris, a spot called Quai de Javel. It was there that Henri Citroën, Monsieur Citroën as they put it then, became the owner of a 12 hectare site, and there that he built the first plant. Citroën planned to manufacture artillery shells efficiently, using American mass production methods. And soon he was making 50,000 shells a day. Citroën's modern factory also included the latest in social support services for the largely female workforce, a company store, medical and dental clinics, child care, and schools. When the war ended in 1918, André Citroën had a modern factory on his hands and no market for his artillery shells. He needed to make something else and decided to roll the dice on the young but highly competitive field of car building. Citroën must have been impressed by the usefulness of motor transport during the war. The governor of Paris had commandeered the taxis of the city to transport his reserves to the front. Their attack on the German flank during the Battle of the Marne halted the Kaiser's forces before they took Paris. Citroën's automotive ambitions were also inspired by Henry Ford whom he'd met before the war while helping the Moore's Motor Company streamline its production methods. Ford's assembly line system for making the Model T fitted closely with Citroën's ideas about efficient production and mass market sales. And like the Model T, the Citroën company's first car was straightforward and simple. Introduced in 1919, the Type A was Europe's first mass-produced automobile. At half the price of the competition, it was also the first inexpensive French car to be sold as standard with basic accessories, spare tire, bonnet, and with an electric starter and lights. Its 1.3-litre four-cylinder engine could maintain a respectable 40 miles an hour and got excellent gas mileage, 38 miles to the gallon. Citroën produced coupe and torpedo body versions of the Type A and a light truck that carried a 650-pound payload on the same chassis. Two years later, Citroën replaced the Type A with a more powerful B2. This is a B2, which came out in 1921. The spare wheel is in back whereas previously it had been on the side. The bonnet slopes down more steeply and has ventilation louvers on the sides. The B2 also had a larger engine than the Type A, which gave it a top speed of 45 miles an hour. It was later equipped with this saloon body. The speed and reliability of the B2 made it a favorite among physicians and earned it the nickname Coupe Docteur. The B2 was also the basis for Europe's first sports car developed from a production model. The Caddy was a lighter, more powerful version of the B2. It had the same 1.4 liter engine block as the base model, but the light alloy pistons gave it more power and a top speed of 56 miles an hour. In 1922, Citroen announced a new smaller car, the 5CV, CV for Chevaux meaning horses, and a reference to the taxable portion of the car's horsepower. Offered in two-seat and later three-seat cloverleaf configurations, most 5CVs were painted yellow 
which soon gave rise to the nickname Petit Citron, the Little Lemon. With a tiny 850cc engine, the 5CV was not exactly a powerhouse. It was capable only of 36 miles an hour, and once it was going, it proved difficult to stop. But the Petit Citron was so reliable and economical that it sold like lemonade, particularly amongst women, making it Europe's first car for Madame. When he stated that he intended to build a hundred cars a day, many detractors said it was impossible. By 1924, he was making 300. 300 a day. The sharply climbing popularity of Citroën's cars was due to André Citroën's genius for marketing, as much as the quality of the cars themselves. The company pioneered discount and credit sales. Repayment plans extending over 12 to 18 months helped to spread motor mania across France. André Citroën also became an adept exponent of the publicity stunt. In 1922, a group of five half-track B2s became the first cars to cross the Sahara Desert. Over the next 10 years, there were two more transcontinental crossings using Citroën half-tracks. Croisier Noir, or Black Cruise, in the mid-1920s, traversed Africa from north to south. Sixteen men and eight Citroën half-tracks struggled for six months to cross more than 12,000 miles of Central Africa. Citroën later mounted an even more hazardous expedition, the Yellow Cruise across Asia in the early 30s. Forty men and 14 half-tracks trekked from Beirut over the Himalayas across the Gobai Desert and through China in the middle of a revolution. The success of the 7,400 mile journey helped cement Citroën's reputation for making cars that were rugged and reliable as well as technically sophisticated. Citroën worked hard to keep his name always in the mind of the French car buying public. At the opening of the 1922 Paris Motor Show, Citroën had his name skywritten three miles long over the city. And he contributed more than 150,000 road signs mounted all over the country, each bearing his name. But perhaps his most famous billboard was the Eiffel Tower, a quarter of a million electric light bulbs illuminated the Citroën name in letters 30 yards high for nine years, starting in 1925. The aviator Charles Lindbergh used the gigantic sign as the final landmark on his famed 1927 transatlantic flight. Andre Citroën threw a reception for Lindbergh at the Quai de Javel factory attended by 6,000 workers. And Citroën solicited endorsements from other celebrities of the day, such as the American singer Josephine Baker, who demonstrated her facility with the precursor of today's commercial jingles. La belle voiture Citroën avec son confort Plaisir d'amour Tu appelles Où, où, on oublie Citroën also took steps to ensure that the whole family knew his name, down to its youngest members. The result was a line of toy Citroën cars and the Citroënette, a children's pedal car model of the 5CV. The company even sponsored Citroënette races at seaside resorts. And later, made an electrically powered version as well. By the mid-1920s, the Citroën company had begun to diversify its hold on the French automotive scene. It set up high-speed intercity bus routes and started its own taxi fleet. Along with Renault and Peugeot, Citroën was now one of the largest car makers in the country. But if André Citroën was to expand his company further, he knew that he'd have to take greater risks. Mm -hmm. 
Andre Citroën had a penchant for gambling. While his success in the casinos of Europe was only modest at best, the calculated risks he took at the helm of his firm had so far paid off. And in 1924, Andre Citroën began to take some bigger gambles with the fortunes of the company. The first was the introduction to Europe of the first all-steel car, the B10. Citroën had seen all-steel bodies being manufactured by the Budd Company of Philadelphia on one of his many trips to the US, and had borrowed heavily to make his own. Though the market for a mass-produced all-steel car was unproven, Andre Citroën adapted the B2 chassis and mechanics to carry the new pressed steel saloon body. But the B2 chassis was found to be too light for the heavier shell. In 1925, the B10 was replaced by the more robust B12. The gamble paid off. The all-steel line was a huge success, quickly emulated by Fiat, Morris Motors in England, and soon all the other mass production car makers. In 1926, the B line reached maturity with the introduction of the B14. It came standard with a larger 1.5 liter engine, a modern electrical system, and a slightly longer chassis permitting the addition of a small boot. The next year, the B14 got power-assisted four-wheel brakes and a new designation, the B14G. By this point, Citroen production was up to 400 cars a day, and the models were evolving at a furious pace. Only two years after it was introduced, the B14, though successful, was replaced by a whole new type. This is a C4, originally known as the AC4, Andre Citroën four-cylinders. It was built in 1928 and can be identified by its new radiator, its new bonnet, its new scuttle and the improved streamlining of its wings. The company later offered a light van version, the C4 commercial, aimed at farmers and small businesses. Citroën also introduced his first six-cylinder car in 1928, the C6. Reminiscent of a big American car, the C6 had a 2.4-liter side valve engine, producing 45 horsepower and capable of 65 miles an hour. The company sold 11,000 of these before it offered an even bigger, better equipment.